Hello and welcome to our demonstration showing the integration between SpaceClam and ANSYS Workbench. We'll be focusing on the import of geometry, defeaturing models and creating parts in SpaceClam, then running our analysis and updating the model in ANSYS through our bidirectional associativity. We'll be looking at the freedom and many possibilities that will open up through the use of SpaceClam and ANSYS Workbench to start with, we'll get familiar with SpaceClaim's simple user interface. We have a small toolset laid out in a ribbon bar format, so there's easy access to all of the tools. Also, we'll be focusing on our four main tools that will allow you to do 95% of everything you need to in SpaceClaim. Pull, Move, Fill, and Combine will be highlighted throughout the demonstration. Now let's open up a model. In SpaceClaim, we can open up models from many different CAD packages in one environment. ProE, SolidWorks, Inventor, or standard formats like STEP, IGES, or Parasolid to name a few. Our model today is coming in from CATIA, so let's open that up and get to work. We've imported a small assembly of a suspension, but we're more interested with the brake caliper behind the tire to use in our analysis. To see it better, we can hide the tire in front or let's just hide the rest of the models too. In addition to running our analysis on the caliper, I'd also like to create brake pads to rest the caliper on to see how that will affect the result. One important thing to know about SpaceClaim is that I can sketch wherever I need to in order to create geometry. Now that we have our first basic sketch down, we can start to build a part from it simply by pulling it into a solid allows you to quickly stretch and form your model. You can dynamically pull on any face in real time, or even make precise ruler dimensions to create detailed parts. With options on the left side of the screen, and a set of tool guides on the right, you can quickly expand your tool set without going through sets of drop-down windows. We'll go through an angle in these walls slightly before adding some contour to the corners. As in space claim, pull works on both surfaces and edges. Now to speed up the selection in space claim, we can use Power Select to automate the process. Power Select allows you to query through the geometry on the part to find like references to the selected object. Here you can see that we found all of the similar edges, so we can round them at the same time. After making the base for our brake pad, we'll need a boss to attach the pad onto the caliper. We can sketch again in order to add more detail to the part and go through and create both those bosses. So now that we have the start to our bosses, we can again go through and pull them up or down, or maybe we want to change our cylinder diameters and make them larger or smaller. Or we can quickly go through and snap them back to the height of our brake pad using our Up To tool guide to bring it right into place. We'll need to connect our bosses onto the base, so we'll just pull them into it and have SpaceClaim auto-boolean them together for us, turning our three solids into one. We should probably add some more contour to this, so let's go back into a section view, and it's a little easier to see if we clip it with the plane. And just by selecting on our line, we can go through and add a bend on there, and snap it against the caliper behind it. With the base nearly done, we'll still need to be able to mount the pad onto the caliper, so we'll need holes going through it. We've seen already how I can sketch on any surface, but I can also use surfaces to split the face of our model. Now we can see the areas that I've split, we can go just like before, pull them one way or the next, and create our holes going through the base. We'll still need to create the ceramic pads on top of it. So again, another alternative to sketching is to copy the lines on our model and offset them inwards, giving ourselves a new face that you can pull one way or the next and add some material to the model. And we can see that I have one solid, but you might want to split it up into different regions. And you can see in the structure tree as I split it, all the new solids that are generated. Now we can delete the areas we don't want, or use our tool Combine to combine geometry back together into one, leaving us with just two solids. 
but sometimes you split geometry and cut things in a different way that you don't want, leaving us with faces remaining. We can always just fill that back in to simplify the model and work in a forward-moving fashion without having to figure out a different way to make the change we want. And now we can soften up these sharp edges by adding in a round. One thing we want is to have two brake pads on the top of this. So we'll quickly generate a plane going through the middle of our part and combine that with the plane to split it up. Now we can go through and scroll through the model to pick on hidden faces quickly and separate them to get our three models remaining. And to see everything a little bit better, let's go through and change the colors of these models and apply some realistic color schemes to them using our Space Claim Display tab on the top of the screen. So it looks like we're ready to go. But after completing the brake pad, I've just learned that we have a new caliper prototype that development's been working on that they've sent me in from Parasolid. In Space Claim, we can work with designs from many environments, so I'll just replace the current caliper with our new one. As it comes in, I can see that there are a few things that are different between the two designs. But let's change the structure of the assembly, and we'll add our brake pad into the caliper that we brought in from Parasolid. And we can see that there's a few things different, and the part is see-through. And that's because if we look in the structure tree, it's a surface, and it didn't come in watertight. This can happen when getting in models from different systems, but let's fix it here. We can identify it by sight some of the areas that are open, but another way to do it is to go through and look at Power Select. We've seen it in action before, but it works for many different cases. Here we can use it to identify all of the problematic areas and fix them with one action and fill in all of those gaps. So now that we've healed the bad regions in the part, we should probably go through and save it as a space claim document to preserve our new geometry. So now that we have a solid, let's go through and de-feature the model to remove things that probably won't affect the mesh. We'll start with this indented text. I'll just grab it all at once and fill it in with the geometry around it to de-feature it. Fill's my best friend when I need to simplify the model. Next we can look at rounds on the model. I can select a chain of rounds to get rid of it by filling it in or power select through the model and grab all of the smaller rounds. We probably wouldn't remove all the rounds on the model, but you can see how quickly and easily you can achieve this in Space Claim. Now looking at our brake pad with our new caliper, we can see that it doesn't exactly match. I can use Move to allow me to translate or rotate geometry to a new position. And if I need to snap it into place, we'll just move it up to the hole beneath it. We can also do the same thing with components as well, moving entire components to a new location or copying it, simply by holding down the control key, just like you copy files in Microsoft Windows. So now that we have our two new brake pads there, let's look at our caliper. And we've simplified the model from Parasolid, but let's build some intelligence into the model. In Space Claim, even though we received the model as a dumb solid, we can build parameters or name selections into a model and have them recognized in ANSYS. Here we can have Space Claim find all of the faces with the same offset, and then we can change the thickness to see how less material will affect the analysis. And there are many different parameters we can create and bring to ANSYS, like the overall height of the model, the important thing is that we can add them to a dumb model and add only the ones that are essential to us as analysts. In addition to adding parameters to the model, we can do the same with named selections. This is useful for choosing the surfaces you like your support or loads to be on. We can use prefixes to help us only bring over the parameters we need to send. I think I'll use NS to indicate that it's a named selection. The last thing we should do before going to ANSYS is to make sure that we apply our loads to the correct areas. We need to apply it to the top of the brake pads, but only the parts that will come in contact with the rotor. 
we can quickly go back to the overall assembly and use the rotor faces to split the faces of our brake pad. And because we copied them, they'll remain the same, so the upper faces get split automatically. We can see this here. We built a model from scratch in Spaceclaim, defeatured and simplified a model from Parasolid, built intelligence and parameters into a dumb model, and split faces to add loads into ANSYS. Now with one click of a button, we can take advantage of the bi-directional associative integration between the two programs. So now we can see that the geometry from Spaceclaim is loaded into ANSYS. And everything that we did there in Spaceclaim is transferred over as well. The named selections, the parameters that we've made, and also the faces that we split to apply the loads. Now we're going to do a static structural analysis of this, and we'll leave the default materials on the parts, because we're really focused on the quick what-if analysis that this partnership will allow us to do. So we'll start by applying the loads to our split faces, and we'll just have forces normal to the faces applied. After applying these forces, we'll go through and apply the supports that are needed on the part. And we can call upon the name selection that we applied earlier, using that to make a quick cylindrical support, or going through and choosing the faces in ANSYS to apply the loads afterwards. And after going through applying our loads supports, we might want to look at the different conditions that will be needed between the parts. Because between the brake pad and our caliper, really, really don't want them to be bonded together. Instead, we'll choose a no separation option. And now that all of our conditions are set up in the model, we can have ANSYS solve this and give us the results. Today, we'll be looking at the deformation between our caliper. So we'll go through and look at this and it's a little bit too much. So let's go through and look at the maximum area and decide what we might want to do to change that. So right inside of ANSYS, we can call upon these parameters and change them. Changing our height, we'll see how that affects the model. So our new geometry is here, but our brake pad is in the wrong location. And that's because the parameter we used initially wasn't controlling the brake pad. Let's just check out our new height. We might want to make a quick measurement to make sure that that's changed. And we can see it's been updated to 120 millimeters. But let's go through and add a 3D dimension so we can see that a little bit better and call upon that later on. So let's go back and focus on the brake pad and how it's interfering with the caliper. So we can go through and move it one way or the next, same way as we did before. But we'll probably need to do something different we can align the bottom of the brake pad to the top of the caliper. So now that we've made this association, we can go back to the groups we've created and move the height. And as I move the height of the caliper, the brake pad moves with it. So let's go back to ANSYS and update the geometry from Spaceclaim. And everything snaps into place. We'll update the results. And we can see that we have a new lower deformation on our part. But it might still be a little too high. So I have another idea. Instead of trying to change the parameters, maybe what we need is some more geometry. And we can add in ribs to help strengthen the part. I'll make the rib here just by copying the geometry off of the model. Now I can change the height and thicken it as well. And if the rib's not exactly how I'd like to make it, I can always simplify it filling in rounds at the top, or even filling in all the geometry at the bottom with one click of the button. So now that we have our ribs set up, we should probably make a pattern of them. So with just the move tool, we can grab on the one rib we've created and drag that along our model, specifying the distance and also specifying how many ribs we'd like in the pattern. We probably shouldn't just add it to one side, so we'll go through and create our next one by also making a precise ruler dimension, saying we want our pattern this far from the other side and snapping that into place. So now that we have our ribs, we can see that they all act accordingly. And if I change one rib, all of them update. 
We probably shouldn't have these angled ribs though, so we'll just undo that action. And another way to look at the geometry in space claim is to look at it in a cross section. So we can cross section through this so we can see all of our ribs as well. Here we could go through and change the height if we'd like to, or add some draft by taking our edges we have and we'll just drag them outward, changing them ever so slightly. After looking at this in a cross section though, we might want to do something else. And I'll apply another parameter to our part. So when I go back into ANSYS, I can control the height of these ribs. And we'll call it rib height. And we'll bring our brake pads back into our design and transfer all of our new geometry back into ANSYS. And zooming into the model, we can see how all of the geometry is passed back and forth between the two programs. All we need to do now is run our analysis again, and we can get a brand new result to see how that's changed. Now it didn't really change it as drastically as I'd hoped it would, so we might need to make the ribs a little bit higher and see how that affects the model. So it's still not as much as I'd like it to be. So there's only one more thing we can really change here that would help the model and strengthen it up. We can go through and look at the thickness and see if thickening it will help the model. Because initially we had thinned it down to one millimeter. So that definitely helped the model. And you can see how quickly we run through several iterations of the design. And if we want to, we can see an animation of our part to see exactly how it's bending as more load is applied to the model. So now that we've looked at the animation, we need to convey the results back to the rest of the team. So for this, we can save out a picture of our results and then go back to space claim to document it. And for that, we'll use 3D Markup. 3D Markup is a tool that allows us to compare different versions of a design. So we can look at our first design and compare it with the one we have now. And we can see it's a little bit different, but to better see it, let's move one out of the way. And to add a little bit more detail to this, we can go through and turn on color change faces, which shows which faces got changed and how by what color they are. We can also add more detail as well and document some of the changes by showing is was dimensions. So we can see what it was when it came in and what we changed it to due to the analysis. Let's also add a 3D note to specify which ones are probably more important. And lastly, we can bring in our results from ANSYS right here into space claim and load the image up so we can document everything in one window. Thank you for watching today's demonstration. I hope you've seen how space claim and ANSYS are providing new breakthrough technology with their bi-directional associative integration, which allows you to use dumb solids like you never thought of before. Space claim is putting the power back into the analyst's hands.